Hello everyone, and welcome to a new PoE Stack update video. It's been two weeks since our last update, and we have a bunch of things to share with you. Some of the highlights include custom ladders, TFT integrations, and a gauntlet review. There's a list on screen of all the things I'd like to go over, and both on YouTube and Reddit, there will be an accompanying test po text post with uh, more details about all of this. Let's jump right into it by taking a look at the ladder. As you can see, there's a bunch of new columns to the right. Uh, we'll go through each of these. So DPS is a pretty basic path of building calculation. The config is not very advanced right now. It's pretty much just whatever the, whatever the base is. There's gonna be improvements to this and we will settle on a, on a static config that everyone will use much like PoE Ninja soon. Base config, sorry, base cost is, uh, is a calculation of all of the unique and other tracked items for a character. This is not a total cost because there are many items that we can't track effectively like rares so using this as a starting point is a good idea just to know what kind of price bracket you're in but it's it's not meant to be a total cost and it probably never will be the top uniques uses the same data to pick out the five most expensive unique items in the build and display them on the ladder here this is nice because it gives you at a quick glance uh, what type of build you're getting into if there's a mage blood and anemias you 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 know where you're starting <laughs> Uh, life and ES, pretty basic, we're already there. Main skill's been updated. So before the program was just using POV's default, now it takes a lot more things into account, such as links, the types of supports, the um, supports that come from the items themselves. Some of the skills have uh, buffs and debuffs based on the popularity of that skill as like a main skill versus supporting skill. And overall, this looks a lot better now to me. Uh, if you find cases where it's not selecting the right skill, I would love to hear about those so I can, can make it better going into next league. Level and Ascendancy were already here, but you may notice that there now are Twitch icons. If you have at least 1,000 views on your Twitch channel, have streamed PoE in the last 20 days, and have your Twitch account connected to your Path of Exile account, you will automatically be included, and you'll get a little Twitch badge that will let people know that you stream. Uh, as you can see, we've also added in the number of characters that are being tracked. I'm looking at Spark Trickster builds in the Sanctum League, so you can pick out uh, how, many, how many builds you're looking at total, basically. Cool. Most of this was already here and has just been expanded on, so let's take a look at a new feature. The new feature I want to share today is uh, Custom Ladders. So this is great if you just want to look at the most popular builds, but if you want a more personalized look, Custom Ladders are great for that. The basic idea here is that you can create a filter for a specific group of people on top of an existing ladder. So this will work in private leagues, in sanctum, in standard, wherever you want. I have a test group set up here, so let's take a look at it. You can see that Plagan is me, and Steel Mage is Steel Mage. This is my, my group of friends. I'm going to remove him and show you how to add him back in. So let's put Steel Mage in, just his POE profile name, add, press save, and then go back. So if you press open ladder, it will open up and take a second and filter it down to all of the people who have accounts in Sanctum League. So these are all mine. Steel Mage doesn't really have any accounts in Sanctum League, so let's switch over to Ziz's Gauntlet. So we can see Steel's current account along with my test account in the Gauntlet. Uh, I think it's gonna be really nice for either guilds. You could add everyone in your guild to a ladder and take a look at it. Groups of friends, obviously a great use for this or even um, creating a collection of people who you're interested in following builds for the start of a league. Uh, these, it's really just a custom filter on top of the existing ladder, so all of the existing features will work. If you want to filter by class or items or skills, it's all good. Um, another thing to take a look at this time is that we've added in the time machine tracking feature. So let's get rid of the custom ladder and just go back to taking a look at the gauntlet in general. So here's the current gauntlet for February 20th, but let's move back and take a look at February 16th. Take a second to load as it needs to go into some of the older data, but um, once this comes up, we should be able to see the gauntlet at uh, this point. So we can see that now Steel's character, the Spark one, is back alive and is playing Spark. If we move into it and take a look at this character in general, we can also take a look at how this works with old snapshots. So it linked into the specific snapshot that existed on that day, and you can see it's a spark character, it's got the impulsos ready to go. Uh, the POV code and the skill tree are all running the old version. So if we copy this and pull up path of building, we should be able to import 
his old tree version and take a look at the tree as it was on that day. We can go to the snapshots here and take a look at a more recent snapshot and we can see that it's now a SRS character. So the tree has been updated again. Also added in actually that these are hoverable now so you can hover the nodes and view what they do. If we copy the POV code and go back to path of building, we should be able to re-import this one and it will switch over to his SRS build. I think this is gonna be really nice for tracking characters. You can see that he had the program installed the whole time. So it sort of picked up the character at level four and took snapshots the entire way through leveling all the way up until the character died. So you have a total history of the character. You can go back to, uh, whoops, you can go back to like pretty early on and check out how he was leveling this character and then like step through the progression all the way up to, to the character's eventual death at the end of the gauntlet. Um, cool, that's the main updates for the characters pages, but the my profile slash my characters page also got some major improvements. So again, these are Steel's characters, uh, all of them. So you can see that the leagues are over here and uh, the ascendancy is main skill gets picked up and uh, the names. So one of the new interesting things is that all the leagues are tracked and while the gauntlet is fairly special, so I added it to the, the top bar, this works for every league. So if you take a look here, here's the pro cell found sanctum hardcore league. If we uh, open up this link, we will get sent over to the ladder for this specific league. This will work for any of your private leagues. So you can view your characters or anyone else's characters who have POE stack installed who are taking part in that league. Uh, you can see that heals are here's all of Steel's characters. If Ziz had it installed, his characters would show up here as well. Uh, the other thing we've added to this page is the um, the ladder, or sorry, the Atlas tree. So he doesn't have one in Sanctum, but if we switch this over to Gauntlet, we should see his current Atlas tree. You can again zoom in, and these are hoverable, so you can see what the nodes do. Pan it around, um, and then all of these links are shareable. So as an example. Let's see, where is the Spark character? There it is. Just open that up again. Uh, so if you wanted to share this with your friend or somebody who is interested, you can just paste it in. They can open it and it also will do a little embed so that they can get a preview of what they're, what they're looking at. Uh, same with any of these links to the, the ladders. If you have a custom ladder made and you want to share with your friends, you can just link them to the ladder. They don't need to make their own version of it. And same with this characters page. If you want to send this to somebody, it's public and they can view your atlas tree or all your characters and get an overview of, of what you've accomplished. Um, yeah, cool. So moving on from this, let's move over to taking a look at some of the atlas passive data. So that was individual atlas data. This is atlas data globally. So this is popularity of all atlas nodes inside of uh, the gauntlet. So we can also check it out inside of Sanctum. Take a second to load it up, but you can also, you can see what the nodes do, see how popular they are. And most importantly, this data is being tracked over time. Uh, currently, I don't have any displays for this, but going into next league, I think it'll be really interesting to make some graphs showing the popularity of certain mechanics or certain nodes and how they shift um, as a league progresses. Cool. The next thing is a TFT integration. So let's go over to my stash tab. Uh, this is just a pretty basic profile that I have with some essences, some other bulk selling type, some type goods. So traditionally, if you want to say bulk sell your essences, you would open up the export, type in your IGN, and then copy the text, move over to the correct Discord channel, copy the image, move over, paste that in, and then uh, send it. And now if you want to sell your scarabs, you would pick out the scarabs, copy that text, go to whatever the correct channel is for scarabs, paste that in, copy the image, wait for it to load, paste that in, and then do it, keep doing this everywhere, basically. Uh, with the new integration, the goal is to do this in one click. So all you should need to do in the future, once this is ready, is push the button and the bot will post the message in the correct channel. And then if you want to sell your essences, just switch over to essences, press the button, the bot will again generate the image and post it in the right channel. Um, I've been working with the TFT team on this and getting it uh, approved and built out the way for, that it works for everyone. I think this will be really nice because it solves a few problems. Most obvious ones are that uh, if you're using this, you're never going to accidentally misformat your messages. So the bot will never remove your messages and time you out. You won't have to 
figure out what channel to post in because the bot will handle that for you. And on the buyer side, you'll know that these messages have not been edited or and the prices haven't been messed with. The bot obviously isn't going to try to scam you. So whatever percentages are listed here and whatever ratios are listed here came from the bot. And you'll be able to know that uh, with certainty. I think this is going to be really nice going forward. And there's a lot of other possible expansions to these types of features that we can, we can keep working on. Really thankful for the TFT team for letting us do this. I think it's going to be really useful for everyone. Uh, another update that you probably have noticed is that the site looks a little different. So we've introduced some theming to the site. Up at the top, you can see that currently you have the dark theme selected. If you like the original blue theme, you can switch back to, to the original. Or if you like some more red, you can switch over to ball themes. I think there's, there's a lot of further improvements we can make to this. There's more themes. Uh, we're working on a light theme already. There's also a lot of uh, kind of smaller, more specific improvements. Like if you want to select specific accent colors or background colors, that's definitely something we can do in the future. Next update is on the economy page. So if I'm on Sanctum and I switch over, we should be able to go into, let's take a look at something a little more interesting. Maybe the calendars touch the non-corrupted version. So previously it was the last 48 hours, but now we've switched to a two week as the default um, data. So you can see the total quantity and the different price brackets moving over the last week. It's pretty nice for getting a better idea of the, the flow of items, 48 hours is useful if you're trying to flip, but the week data is probably more useful on the whole. Uh, the 48 hour data will definitely be coming back. I still have all that data. I just, we need to reconfigure it so it's uh, displayable again as an, as an option. Speaking of uh, pricing data, I've set up a GitHub organization for PoE stack, which is just GitHub slash PoE stack. And in here is PoE stack public data. So the same thing that does the calculations now publishes CSVs of all leaked data that have enough activity for it to show up on our site. So if you go into any of these, you can get the total economic breakdown of every item we track. Every few hours, it'll be updated automatically. So you can work with this yourself or use it for your own projects. Uh, the GitHub as an organization as a whole is a great place to provide feedback or raise issues. There's a issues repo that has all of our future uh, ideas or enhancements along with some bug reports in here. If you have your own ideas or enhancements and you want to open an issue here, go for it. We would love to hear them. You can also head over to the projects tab and open up the roadmap. And I have some expand ideas that aren't fully fleshed out yet, not an issue yet, and what we're currently working on along with stuff that's like in review. So if you want an uh, overview of the project as a whole, this is a great place to go. If you'd like to talk more about the project, I would still encourage you to join the Discord. There's a lot of uh, great people in there who can answer questions, including myself, and uh, lots of good ideas for the site have came from the Discord. So, so feel free to join and either provide feedback or give us ideas or just tell us how you're using the app because uh, having more insight into how people are using it definitely provides us with, with which directions are the most important to go in in the future. The last thing to go over is the bottom. We've added some more resources here to give you some more information. You can see the GitHub is linked, here's the Discord, and now the FAQ section has been moved over here. We're gonna be expanding this more over the next few weeks with uh, more information that should help you use the site and understand what's going on. So if you have questions that are here, take a look here. If you have questions that aren't here, let me know in either the GitHub repo or the Discord, and we will add them here so that everyone is more informed. Uh, yeah, I think those are most of the updates over the last few weeks. As we get closer to next week, the focus is going to be more switched from building out lots of new features to polishing the existing features and making sure everything is ready and working well for uh, for next week. Thank you to to everyone, uh, the TFT team. The, we're up to six people who have contributed contributed code now to the front end, which is great. Uh, most projects only ever have one contributor. So any anyone who contributes code is very appreciated. And there are definitely real features that are now coming out of contribution. And this is gonna be amazing for the app in the future. As it continues to grow, I'm sure even more people will contribute both ideas and, and even code. Uh, so thanks to everyone on the contributors list here. And yeah, that's all I have for today. Hope you guys have been enjoying your 
wrapping up of the PoE League. And if you've been using the app, thanks for thanks for checking it out. Look forward to keep adding more features and getting it ready to go into next league. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day.